Greetings friends, today we are going to look at the concept of backup. I'm going to alter these kind of videos, uh, some of them will be more practical where I show what to click and why, and this video will demonstrate uh, some concepts which are important to understanding of the whole backup strategy. After this video, you'll have realization what is a proxy repository, tasks for that, what are general system requirements based on, and what do we actually backup. One thing I'll remind you of, please treat this as my personal experience sharing. It is not an official statement because I am doing these videos on my free time saying what I learned. Today, we are going to talk about the backup process of VMware virtual machines, which means that we do have some kind of VMware hypervisor. Let's say the base unit is ESXi host. On this host, you'll have some virtual machines running, and that's what you want to backup. But the virtual machines must represent something. Actually, when the machine is running, it's just a process which takes CPU and RAM. You can look up my video about VMs if you want to know more. I'll link it in the description. And also, even if it's not running, it still exists in the form of files. The files are VMX, which is a configuration file, and VMDK, which are disks. And of course, a bunch of other files, but they're less critical. So what we are going to back up is actually this folder with the files where the machine is stored. And the most important files to understand what machine is, is the VMX, which contains configuration, and VMDK, which are disks. In order to back up the machine, we must read the data. And that role is performed by a server, either Windows or Linux, called Backup Proxy. We also need to store backups somewhere. And this role is performed by a server, also Linux or Windows, called repository. So in the Vim hierarchy, these two objects must be created. By default, only the Vim backup server itself fulfills both roles. But if you want to size your environment, you'll want to make multiple proxies and possibly create multiple repositories, especially if you want to store your backups in different locations to avoid data loss. To explain why we need multiple proxies, we need to understand what the proxy does. The proxy is going to download the VMX file of your machine and the VMDK disks of your machine, and then send the files to the repository, which will store them in the backup file. In order to download them, it must connect to the SXI host and retrieve the data. And for this process, we must run different components called data movers. You'll see data mover or transport service installed on your proxy machine in case of Windows, and on Linux, we deploy the processes and run them every time it is required. So these programs themselves are called Vim agents, vimagent.exe on Windows and just vimagent on Linux. And the agent is going to connect to SXI and retrieve the files. The most basic connection type is called NFC, Network File Copy, and it uses the port 902 on the SXI host. So the port must be opened and accessible for the proxy. It is also worth mentioning that it will connect a specific IP on SXI called VM kernel IP on management network. So if you want to direct your NFC traffic for network backup file mode, you want to set up this VM kernel IP on specific network adapter you want to use. There are going to be separate agents for different files because they can be downloaded in parallel. A short comment, it is only true for the proxy. The repository will only use one agent per job, which means that it will have to use multi-threading to receive multiple connections. One agent starts first, it's called a source agent, which will download the basic configuration and small lightweight text files, such as VMX. And for each disk, there will be a separate Vim agent. So if you have three disks, you will need to run three Vim agents. So how do you avoid overloading the proxy machine by running, let's say, 200 agents? Well, there is a setting for that, and the setting is called number of concurrent tasks. If you set the number of concurrent tasks to one, one proxy with such setting will be able to process only one disk at a time. If you set it to two, it will be able to process two disks at a time, which means that it can back up one machine with two disks at once or two machines with one disk each. If the machine would have three disks, the third disk would have to wait for one of the disk backups to finish which means that the more tasks you have, the faster will be your backups. But of course, don't rush to increase all your tasks for two reasons. One, each concurrent task would normally require a separate CPU. If it's a virtual proxy, you would have to give it more virtual CPUs. If it's a physical proxy, it will need to have multiple cores. You don't want to have multiple tasks fighting for the same core. It's going to reduce performance. And secondly, the 
traffic itself needs to be taken into consideration. So if you create a super powerful proxy with 2000 tasks, it will still be able to run backups as fast as your network allows. So there are multiple bottlenecks which are important. The most obvious ones are reading, which is source, processing by proxy, which is called proxy, transferring between proxy and repository, which is called network, and writing from repository itself to the disk on the repository or the local storage. And the bottleneck analysis is very important if you want to figure out how to make your backups faster. If your bottleneck is target, which means writing on the disk on the repository, increasing the number of proxies and tasks is not going to help. So how does the proxy download VM files? The VMX file and other small files from the data store, such as configuration file and descriptors, will go through NFC, network mode. The disks can also go through the mentioned NFC, but the traffic will go through the single port of the same network card on ASXi for every machine that you back up, which means that multiple proxies will fight through the same connection, and also it will intervene with standard management activities such as vMotion, operations, and communication between hosts. For that reason, there are two other approaches to downloading data. One of the methods is called HotEd, or more officially, virtual appliance, where a VMDK file will physically be attached to the proxy, so it will only work with the virtual proxy, and the ESXi host with the proxy must have access to the data store with the files. And the second method is called direct access, and there we also have two options. One of them is called direct sun, which means that the proxy must be a machine connected to the sun fabric, so you will have some kind of sun storage, which is connected through a SCSI fiber channel to ESXi hosts, and the proxy will have the similar level of access, which means that the LANs of the storage will be presented to the proxy. And the proxy will download files directly from the storage system, circumventing the SXI host. And also there is a method called direct NFS, where the data store is not directly attached through SAN method, but it's an NFS data store. And the proxy would have NFS traffic access to the share with the files. In that case, the proxy will also download and get the files without touching the SXI connection. All these methods can be manually selected. But by default, the proxy will try to use the best one, starting with direct methods, then switching to hotend, and finally NBD. And if you force a specific mode, the proxy may be unable to work in that mode if the requirements are not met. For that reason, there is a setting to fail over to default network mode. But if you do not want your proxy to start using your management traffic, you can disable this setting. Now for repository, I must say that there are two options. One of them is, of course, tasks, which are, by the way, disabled by default because you are supposed to control tasks by proxies. And if you do set different number of tasks and proxies in the repositories, make sure they kind of match because the tasks work in pairs, which means that if you have 20 proxies with 20 tasks, but on the one repository is one task, you will still use one task only. There is also a setting which allows you to control ingestion rate. That will slow down the backup process if you are afraid of overloading your drive with incoming write operations. While there are multiple tasks in the setting for the repository, there is only one agent per job, and that agent will use multiple threads to use multiple cores for the number of tasks that is required. When the backup is being done, the data that you're downloading, the VM files such as VMX and VMDK, are going to be stuffed into the backup file, which makes them take much less space on the disk. The backup file itself is similar to a zip archive, so you can understand what it looks like. It is basically a compressed file with a few other options, such as deduplication, and inside it has a different file system. In this case, it's called VMFS. The file system will have unique block size, it will have a feature of deduplication and specific compression options. Vim uses Zlib and LZ4 if somebody is interested in a specific type of compression. But generally, it is just an archive with files inside. Now, when you run the backup for the second time, an interesting thing happens because it's going to make an incremental backup, which actually means only changes will be backed up. So you will not have two huge backups. You'll have one big backup and then a small one, which contains the difference. But that goes for a different video where I will explain what are the different backup modes and how does the number of Easter points and retention work. It requires a lot of extra overlook to understand the specifics. So at this point, we have discussed the situation, and now you should know that when Vim does the backup, it uses 
proxy and repository. The proxy and repository can have different configurations. The repositories themselves can come in clusters such as scale out repositories, but don't worry about it now yet. It's going to be a more advanced setup where basically you can provide some kind of data fillover between multiple sites. Uh, the backup is done through the proxy and it's read through four different transport modes, which means that it can use a default TCP port for management network, which is usually the slowest. It can also use a virtual proxy and read from an attached disk, or it can use a direct connection if you do have NFS or SAN storage. And whenever you look at it this way, you must understand the bottlenecks in your system, where is the source, where is the network, where is the target, to successfully balance and size the environment for proper performance. I hope this video was sufficiently educational for you. And next time when we look at the backup job and all the settings, they will make more sense. The retention settings, days to keep restore points mentioned in this video are going to be a topic for a long discussion because there are quite a few things to keep in mind and quite a few specifics you would like to know and some tricks. I may also come up at some point with an explanation of scale out repository, but let's not go that far and focus on the basics first, so you have a clear picture of what we are doing in the backup application. That will help us to establish a solid backup plan and make sure the environment is protected. Thank you very much for watching. I wish you the best day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.